Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told out of Voice of Radio, so today we've got some new Pokemon cards to talk about. They're coming in Paradigm Trigger over in Japan, which means that they're going to be part of our Silver Tempest expansion, and these look very, very interesting indeed. And I want to start off with Ariados here, who on the one hand looks like a fantastically interesting card and on the other hand basically is just a great example of my big problem with the lost origin format we currently find ourselves in so what have we got well we start off with a stage one pokemon with 90 hp which is very low but does give access to level ball which is kind of nice but it also does evolve from a 60 hp spinner rack and that is less nice because, as I've told you at the moment, Sableye is everywhere. And Sableye, actually, I told you it was going to be a problem. The lovely Tord Reklev did actually just go and win Peoria Regionals with a Lost Box deck playing Sableye. So, Sableye is not getting less popular. Sableye is getting more popular. And Sableye can drop 12 damage counters for a single energy, as long as you've got 10 cards in the Lost Zone. But that's not that difficult to pull off. If you've tested it, you'll know. If you haven't, I have. Trust me, it's not that difficult to pull off. But it's also kind of interesting because you've got 60 and 90 HP, which means that they're just going to be dropping damage counters all day long. And remember, it's damage counters, not damage. So Manaphy will not save you. Manaphy blocks damage. It doesn't block damage counters. So they can just drop damage counters. And as it stands at the moment, we don't have a 70 HP spinner rack. Which means that they can basically KO two Spinarak on the bench in one go. Yeah. So, this is a huge problem and we need to get that out right at the beginning. But the card itself is actually very interesting. Translations from the lovely Antoine Boulet and myself. Because I have a go at these nowadays as well. And what we've got is a terrible attack. Two energy, 50 damage, nobody cares. But the ability says your opponent's V-Stars attacks cost one colourless energy more. But you cannot apply more than one Blighting Web Ability at a time. I.e. it doesn't stack. It would be hilarious if you could get four of these going at once. And your opponent's V-Stars attacks cost four energy more. That would be great. Doesn't work. But even one energy more is, is kind of very interesting. Because most people, and this is a pretty fair way to play. Most people set up their decks... In such a way as they're getting the right amount of energy. And it can be super awkward to play any other way. But here's the problem. Even if we ignore the Sableye issue. And I'm not entirely sure we should ignore the Sableye issue. Because it's a big issue. If we look at the kind of V-Star that I see in play right now. A lot of them will be able to navigate around this. So something like Giratina V-Star as an example. What we've got here is free energy to attack. And you can add one, but they're going to be playing Mirage Gate. And that helps them to accelerate energy, and that's going to be a bit of a problem. Palkia, remember, has its own ability, the V-Star Power, that lets it attach up to free water energy from your discard to your water Pokemon. But now it also plays Kyurem V Max that's got an ability that can accelerate energy. Just see where we're going with this. Even if you ignore the Sableye problem, and I really don't think you should, but even if you ignore the Sableye problem, a lot of the V-Star decks that are seeing play at the moment play energy acceleration. There was only one V-Star deck in the top eight of Peoria Regionals that wasn't playing energy acceleration, and that's Hisui and Zoroark V-Star. Now against that deck, this is actually really hyper good because they really rely on being able to use double turbo energy to just pay the attack cost in one go. And certainly the 8th place deck at Peoria Regionals, that was Osvaldo Murillo. Sorry for the pronunciation there. They played 4 double turbo energy and nothing else. So against them, this is a really good card, but... There are too many decks at the moment that play Energy Acceleration. Yes, this works very nicely in a Zoroark deck. Because you can switch Zoroark into this. And we do have a 70 HP Zorua. Which actually really, really helps. So that's rather lovely. But 
I've stopped testing Zoroark decks at the moment because I'm too worried about Sableye. And I'm one of the biggest fans of that Zoroark card you're ever going to find. This is a potential issue. If you can get it working though, it's not going to work against every V-Star deck. Lots of them have ways around it. But this is going to work against a bunch of them. And this is a very, very interesting ability. I'm still, however, forced to only give it three Wossies. Because at the end of the day, there are too many problems with it. It's an interesting card. It's one that I like. But I do think that in the format we're in, there are too many issues. But hey, how about a new Incineroar? I like this Incineroar. Firstly, I think the artwork is adorable. Secondly, love me some Incineroar. What have we got? Wow, we've got 170 HP, which is quite high for a stage two. I still think it should be higher nowadays, but it, it's fine. It, it's a bit higher. That's quite nice. And we've got two energy, 180 damage, discard all energy. Not a fan of this, partly because you have to discard it, boo, hiss, etc. And partly because with a choice bout, you only go up to 210. And look, if I'm putting multiple energy onto a stage two Pokemon and then putting a choice bout, I don't want to just be doing enough to KO some Pokemon V, but not all. It's not enough. But the really interesting thing about Incineroar here is the attack secret move. For one fire energy, choose an attack from one of this Pokemon's previous evolutions and use it as this attack. Oh, well, that sounds quite nice, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds very nice indeed. Basically, what you're doing here is trying to use the attacks of previous evolutions. Now, I'm just going to spoil it for a moment. The last time we got an Incineral line was in Unbroken Bonds, which has rotated out. So there are no other Litten or Toracat from previous sets that you can rely on here. It's just the ones from this set. So what have we got? Yeah, we've actually got two super interesting attacks. So Litten for two energy, but it's for one energy. Remember the rule here. It's the same rule it's always been. If the card specifically says you still need the necessary energy to attack, then you've got to have the necessary energy to attack. If it doesn't specifically say that, you don't need the necessary energy to attack. This doesn't. So all of these attacks are usable on Incineroar for just one fire energy. And what it does is 20 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Bearing in mind that Incineroar has 170 HP. Now look, a lot of the V-Stars and V-Maxes and all of that that are around at the moment, let, let's not pretend they will be getting one-hit KOs. But what this basically does is it says to your opponent, wait until you've got the one-hit KO. And like I've said, they will probably get the one-hit KO. Because what decks aren't playing something that can get a one-hit KO? But against decks that can't, this is amazing, and against decks that can, you're forcing them to not do those early attacks. A lot of the time, especially in the early game, we are fine setting up two hit KOs, knowing that we can finish them off later. And basically, this is an attack that says to your opponent, yeah, don't do that, mate. That's not going to work. Wait until you've got the KO. I love the idea that your opponent is going to constantly be doing 150 and not getting a KO. And you're going to be able to respond with 300 damage. That's amazing. It's a lovely thought. The reality is most of the time that's not going to work. I'm sorry. It's not. Most of the time your opponent is going to be able to get a one hit KO. But still, it's a nice backup if nothing else. The other one I really like here because there's a combo going on. Is Toracat's Hang In Their Claws. As the lovely Antoine has translated it. 40 damage for one energy, but during your opponent's next turn, if this Pokemon has full HP and would be knocked out by damage from an attack, it is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. See where we're going with this? 40 damage isn't enough, but as long as you've got full HP, you deal 40 damage, your opponent does enough to KO but doesn't KO, and then you respond, and at that point, 
You've actually got 160 damage on you. You're doing 320, which isn't enough to KO every Pokemon VMAX. However, with a Choice Belt, it will be. It'll get most of them, and with a Choice Belt, it will make sure it gets all of them. And it's a bit of a convoluted way around, I'll be honest with you. But in theory, you attack with Incineroar, don't give up a prize, and then take a KO. So the theory here is, against the two or three prize Pokemon, you get the first hit. Again, you're a Sage 2 getting the first hit. might be awkward, but bear with me. Assuming you get the first hit, you deal 40. They don't KO you. And then you get to go and deal a huge attack and KO them. That's kind of awesome. Now, there's a million ways around this. Your opponent can drop damage counters and stuff like Sableye and set you all up at once. Any damage counters on you mean they can KO you. You've got to have full HP for this to work. Or your opponent can just switch the active or whatever. Because if they use Hang In Their Claws, but you then say go Escape Rope Boss's Orders, that will reset the effect. So it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is really interesting. And it is really fun. And certainly at a pre-release, this could be an absolute monster. Assuming you can get it evolved up in a pre-release, which I understand is not always that easy. But, again, this is a super interesting card. I love the single energy. But the fact that it's a stage 2 is awkward. And the fact that your opponent can just drop damage counters. Or they can just do a tiny poke. Because you're only ever really doing kind of... 40 damage and you can attach a second energy and do 180 but that is awkward so they can do a tiny poke and then ko you or they can just switch it there's a million different ways around it and that is a problem i'm giving this between three and four wassies we don't give half wassies that would be barbaric i love the design of this i think it's extremely fun i just don't think it's gonna work all that often and that makes me a little bit sad but then we finish off with a new special energy card this one this one's kind of interesting, and I kind of like it. What we've got here is regenerative energy, and it's the usual deal. It's a colorless energy, blah, blah, blah. But if it's attached to a Pokemon V, and you evolve that Pokemon V into a V-Star or V-Max, heal 100. I kind of like this, honestly. I kind of like this. Because the thing is, if you don't need a particular kind of energy, why not? And the thing is, what you can do, you can attach this to your energy for the turn, and then immediately evolve up, and that's awesome. And it doesn't matter how you attach this, you don't heal when you attach, you heal when you evolve. So this is really good, and you've got to think, you've got to think, this is designed for Lugia. Because remember, Lugia's got that ability which will play colourless Pokemon, regardless of what stage they are. And obviously, you know, one of the best options here is Archeops. And Archeops lets you accelerate special energy. So here, you use Lugia to get Archeops out. You use Archeops to accelerate special energy. And then it's not really going to be good on your first Lugia, because you have to evolve the Lugia to get the Archeops out. But then subsequent Lugia, if your opponent does a bunch of damage, you just use Archeops to accelerate this, and then evolve up and heal 100. That's actually pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. That is actually pretty good. And certainly, it's better with something like Archeops that can accelerate the energy, which in turn is better with something like Lugia that can cheat it into play. But if you don't worry about what kind of energy you're playing, I kind of like this. I think this is really good. There's a lot of potential. Or like the other day, we looked at Reggie Lecky, where the V is actually a legit attacker, but the V Max is pretty cool as well. So what you can do here is be attacking with the V, but right before you evolve up into the V Max, you attach one of these and then evolve up, and then you're off and rolling. Or you play it in decks with stuff like Gardenia's Vigor. Because in Gardenia's Vigor decks, you're going to be using Gardenia's Vigor to accelerate grass energy. So that means that you can afford to attach this for the turn. Or we could say the same things with Fire Dex and Magma Basin, or Water Dex and Melanie. Any of this would be fine. But my point is, what you're essentially doing here is just using this as your attachment for the turn. Hopefully when you've got other energy you can accelerate. And then healing 100 when you evolve up. I cannot be the only one that thinks this is kind of cool and a nice little combo. 
Oh, yeah, and don't forget that Wyndham Stadium hasn't rotated out yet. It's going to rotate beginning of next year. Hasn't rotated out yet. So, actually, if you evolve a V into a V Max with this energy attached and Wyndham Stadium in play, you'll heal 200 damage. How cool is that? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is actually really kind of cool. VMAXs can really start taking advantage of this. Winter Stadium hasn't seen a huge amount of play. But bearing in mind, Pokemon V generally go up to 220. So you're not going to have more than 210 HP taken off. So when I heal up 200, that's basically fully healing. So if my opponent's right about to KO my Pokemon V and I VMAX, hey... Now I'm fully healed. I'm giving this one four Wossies. I'm probably overrating it. I don't even care. I think this is a really interesting card and I like it. But I want to know what you think about this and about Ariados and about Incinera also. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and Pokemon card games. All kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio where you can support the channel. Get a weekly bonus pod to answer all of your questions. Join a Discord to chat Pokemon with us and get shoutouts like the lovely Kenneth, who has been a supporter of ours for a little while now and is a lovely person. So thank you very much for the support and thank you for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.